Welcome to Bomb Diggity's Guide to Fire Emblem Three Houses Monastery Exploration. If you're like me, you get dropped into this big hub world, and it's a lot to take in and you want to do it all. On Sundays in Fire Emblem Three Houses, you're given a couple options. Exploring the monastery is the first. Seminars next. Battles third. Resting and then free options such as marketplace certifications and skipping the week. These first four options you can only choose one of. Exploration will put you in the monastery walking around in a 3D environment. Seminar will allow you to select a character from the monastery to teach you and several other students one or two particular skills. Battle will bring up the options of battles you can do at any time, some of which may be done freely and repeatedly before moving on to the next week, some of which you will only be able to do a certain amount of times before you must end the day and start the next week. Resting will recover weapon durability, but is otherwise fairly useless compared to the first options. Marketplace allows you to shop, buy weapons, items, battalions, and use the blacksmith once all these features are unlocked. You can also do all of these options in the exploration option. Certification brings up a list of all characters you have in your party and what classes they are capable of learning to become, based on what skills they have that are applicable to those classes. Chances of succeeding are also included next to the classes. A 100% chance means that you will get that class. Less than 100% means that you may fail and have to try again for that class the next week. Exploring comes with no time limit. You can walk around freely and talk to everybody before you decide to end the day and start the next week in the next lesson plan. To unlock all the features of the exploration mode, the best thing to do is to complete quests given to you by the students and staff as you explore. Quests most often do not consume any timed event points, so you're free to complete them as quickly as they become available. Some quests will warn you that they will skip the day or the rest of the month if you attempt them. These are usually heavy story quests, so just read carefully when it asks you yes or no on things. You can take quests and often complete them the same day, but you typically have the whole month to complete the quest, so if you can't do it on one Sunday's exploration, you can leave it for a future Sunday that same month. Quests will often reset to new ones the next month. Many will be as easy as taking an item to another character and giving it to them as a gift. Some of these quests even unlock further features, such as the tea park. The monastery map is divided into many unique places with interesting features in each and characters to talk to strewn throughout. Your character, Byla, the professor can do a certain amount of actions based upon their professor level. At the beginning, you only have one action you can take. Events that consume an action point are indicated by an hourglass symbol next to the option in the dialogue. You raise your professor level by participating in different activities. The more activities you do, the higher your professor level will become. That's why it is advisable to do just about every free action you can find before quitting for the day. Often free actions will put you just over the edge so that the next week you'll have one more timed action because your professor level went up. When talking to students or staff that have been or could be recruited to your party, you're given four options. Recruit, which opens up a dialogue in which the character will tell you what they require from your professor's skills in order to join your party. Giving a gift will result in a higher support level between the professor and that party member. Certain gifts to certain characters will raise supports more or less, depending on their personalities, likes, and dislikes. You can get to know them to understand what they would like to receive as a gift. Lost items, like many gifts, can be found while walking around the monastery as blue little wisps of light. Unlike gifts, lost items can only be given to their owner. You can attempt to give a lost item to anybody, and they will either tell you that it is not theirs, or that it is theirs, and that it will raise your, their motivation and support. Beware that if that character has max motivation, it will not raise the motivation to give them a lost item. So sometimes it's better to wait 
if you're certain you have the character the lost item belongs to. Many characters will also have the mission assistance option, which allows you to join battles that month. Among the free things to do around the monastery are fishing and gardening, of course shopping, reviewing anonymous notes left by the students and staff, giving them advice in an attempt to encourage them, and the amiibo gazebo located in the courtyard that allows you to scan amiibo to get free items or unlock features in battle. Fire Emblem amiibo in particular will unlock the features in battle such as soundtracks, while other amiibo will give you free items, but each amiibo can only be used once per save file. Among the actions that consume time to activity points determined by your professor level, there are sharing meals with two other students, raising the bonds between them and increasing motivation, cooking meals with one other student or staff, choir practice with two students, and tournaments which showcase a different weapon every month and allow you to choose a party member to participate in auto battles to win prizes. This has been an overview of the things you can do in the exploration mode of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Check for future videos and I'll go into exactly how each of these features work and how they can benefit you. Thanks for watching.